This week we talk Elimination Chamber, Monday Night Raw, Smackdown Live and Ty Dillinger's just handing his notice in. with Rob, Tom and Ethan. This week we've had uh, Elimination Chamber, we've had Raw, we've had Smackdown, lots of other little bits of news as well. It's been a big week this week, hasn't it's it? It's been a very big week. <laughs> it's been yeah. a big week. So let's start with uh, Elimination Chamber. Um, the inaugural women's tag team match or titles, they were, you know, there was the first airing of them and the first winners were... Can we just say, you know, just say it looks awfully like the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. I isn't thought it? that. As soon as yeah, it was, it uh, they unveiled it. Like just nick the design of the end of the GP title. It doesn't look like a WWE title. Yeah. It looks like it, right. No, it looks it mint, looks but okay. they've definitely just seen that title and thought, oh, I quite like that. We'll just we'll nick that. Yeah, it does look quite good. I think with this, like, there's so much sort of hype around it all, and it was such a big event. I, I, I was kind of disappointed that it was the opening match on the main card. I wanted it to be higher up. Um, I've, I've heard like apparently it was supposed to close the show that was like one of the big talks about closing the show but um, from what I've read dirt sheet kind of stuff Vince wasn't wasn't sure the reaction to the winners was going to be what he wanted to close a pay-per-view so he decided against that and obviously went in a different direction instead but apparently on the run-up to it it was supposed to be closing the show I'm for glad the that it didn't time. I, I am yeah I, I, I'm kind of glad that it didn't yeah I, um, think, I think the match itself sucked you didn't enjoy it, did you? No. It was very, thought... like, really clumsy. None of it really made much sense. It was, like, full of daft spots that made nobody look any better than what they came in looking like. And the only one person that I loved out of the entire thing was Mandy Rose. She sold like a champ. Absolutely. Like, Are they still called so... Absolution? No, no I don't they're called, called fi- Fire and Desire or something. <laughs> <laughs> Freed from desire. That's oh. terrible. Mandy like, Rose is terrified. Is shit aftershave. Does sound a bit like a shit aftershave. I don't it's I like it's, a, ni- it's, a 90s girl band or something. It is. It's it? fire and something. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, I always think they say fire and ice whenever they say it. I always I think that Game of Thrones. Fire, fire and desire. I think it, it might is. be. I, w- I was glad Fire that, um, and desire. Naya and Tamina didn't win. Iconics are terrified. Oh, yeah, definitely. I was hoping that it would have been Peyton Royce. Iconics. Okay, but. I yeah. just don't know. They're they're the kind of people that are they're so over. They don't need a. They'll win it. They'll win it. They point. will get it eventually. But I think uh, maybe we all kind of knew that it was going to be Sasha and Bailey that were going to win it. Yeah. It, oh yeah. Without a doubt. Like as soon as the match started, you're like, okay, that's where they're going with this. Like, it's such a weird. It's such a weird thing to have like a, a women's tag belt before you've really got a, a women's tag division. Like, yeah, they've been or, building uh, it for a little bit, haven't they? I guess kind of like, weird. The, the, the factions well, that they have. I suppose but... really, there's only sort of like Mandy and. And Sonya Deville, and then the Iconics are only really the, the sort of legitimate tag yeah, team. Yeah, anyway, it, really. it, it seemed really I mean, like maybe Nia Jax and Tamina are as well because they're pushing just, the sort of it just, quick time yeah, angle Jesus with them, Christ. Aren't they, but... It just seemed stupid to me to put the titles on two people that for the longest time were feuding like crazy, like had loads of like crazy matches yeah. with each other, like hated each other. Bailey like didn't Bailey like semi turn heel at one point and was like against like yeah, the hugging well, stuff did, and, she? She and Sasha like, did as well went heel and, then and then they just kind of like they hooked and then that was it, it. And then that, now it's, a typical, tag it's a typical WWE thing of banging the titles on Orton and Cena isn't it you take two single stars who are already like super over as single stars and you go well what, what are we pushing more here are we pushing the tag titles are we pushing the wrestlers when really all they're doing is trying to get the, the titles over at this yeah. stage so we'll just give it to the, the fan favourites that the kids are going to know. Yeah. Uh, just to give it, I think just to give it a running start, but it just sets a real bad precedent, doesn't it? Because you'll just get a load of, like, you'll, you'll, I don't know, throw a random team together. Look at, um, I don't know, Natalia and Alicia Fox. There you go. They'll, they'll probably win it at some point. It just, yeah. uh, I don't know. I just feel like, that. yeah, the entire match itself was just really, like, sloppy. It didn't really make any sense. There was, the odd moment that was, like, pretty cool, um, a lot of the moves didn't land like a lot of it a lot of the stuff they planned they'd obviously like in the back gone over like this will be great we'll get a good pop from this and then they did it and it was like yeah okay well, that's cool I guess yeah I like, think you're right I think you're right there was a lot of like yeah. I hated the um, the chuff oh I fucking hated it the, the thing uh, Sasha and Bailey hit that like backstabber into belly to belly yeah and then because who was it that was getting pinned was it Sonya Deville yeah 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 because Mandy Rose wasn't fast enough she kicked out of it yeah. And I was like, <laughs> and you saw Bailey look towards Mandy Rose, realize she wasn't going to make it, and then look at 
Sonya Deville on the floor, tap her arm, and she obviously said, like, kick or something like yeah. that. And then Sonya Deville kicks out of what could have been, like, one of the strongest finishers. Like, you could have built that finisher to put everybody away. Like, it always wins matches. And then instantly, like said, Sonya Deville's like, yeah, and instantly Sonya Deville's just kicked out of it straight away. And I'm it like, brilliant. Like a half nice one. kick out, half save heart well it was a blatant kick out yeah and then if you watch it back she 100 percent kicked out referee pulling his arm away it was just slow to three as well it would have been so cool just to have like sonya deville laid out dead and then mandy rose just makes the save and then she's just laid out stone cold yeah but they actually had to kick out just little things like that that you normally wouldn't make much difference but in a match of that like prestige it's the first ever title like Mm. title match and you're doing little things like that that are going to ruin future plannings Elimination chambers are always rife with that. They seem to always have that problem. Yeah. Like people people just forget spots and they always tend to end up with like in just a complete car crash. Remember that one where Dolph Ziggler had to like reassemble it from the ground up because everyone forgot. Yeah, and he was like he was talking people to them all, weren't he? They're like all in yeah, all, yeah, like, all like in it, the four corners and he was like explaining the match to him. Yeah, it's, it looks it seems to be like a really hard match to kind of correct. It probably is. And I say, really me- I'm saying it yeah. sucks as like a person that can't even probably like take a back bump. But... Oh no, I agree with you. I agree with you. I, there's right, a lot I of timing things you. as well, isn't there involved? But then saying that yeah. with the women's one, they were all in. There was no one who was eliminated before or everyone had come out of the I don't like that either. No, don't I, like that. Like, I don't I was, like I don't like that. Someone should have gone before like why do another it? pod what's, the, what's the point in having yeah. all the pods open up at different times for them all to be in the exact same place yeah. all fighting? You might like, as well just all have them in sense. at the same time. Yeah. Don't make any sense. I'll tell you it'll be I'll tell you it'll be really good inside the chamber, undisputed era. They'll be they'd oh, be fantastic. Because yeah. they'd just run it they just run it to their own. I love it when someone gets it and just works the match to their advantage. Well they'd be good at it because they've done Two war games, war games they? Match, yeah. yeah it's a similar, Man, I know they it's could do a different aesthetic, similar layout. It's a very similar thing. You start at different times and then you get in, and all, and then the match you know, all starts. Yeah, but yeah, I thought it wasn't. I don't think it was. It was bad. It was. I'm, yeah, it was I'm a, not. It's not I'm, the worst opener no, I've ever no, seen, no, no, and no. it's. I'm probably just being no. a bit harsh on it, but I just didn't like the match. At it least was, it wasn't really the. Bad. You know, we'll start with the tag team division again. I mean, they know they did because it's the women's ones, but it wasn't like a. You're a normal sort of. Right, the Usos are going to start now, yeah. and that's the first thing you happen. But yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't that bad. It could have been better. I think. Uh, that should be WWE's tagline. Wasn't that bad? Could have been, been better. better. I think Mandy Rose is is coming on a lot stronger as a in ring performer recently as well. Yeah, I, mean, I think she's, I think she's and, wicked. Uh, she I, I she, she sold her ass off for like well. the entire match. Like she proper. She worked hard in that match. You could tell yeah. she was fully into it. And that, yeah, that like um, sit out face busters, so yeah, fucking it's a good. good finisher, Such a great finisher. It's a good finisher. Did I you pin anybody? Like um, I can't. I don't think so. I don't think so. And the iconics pinned Carmella and no, well, pin my pin my own no, I mean, to get them two out. Mm. That was really cool. How they like they flipped over into like that. They both pinned her at the same time. Yeah. Like, she flipped over into that like schoolboy almost. Yeah, like, pinned her up. That was really cool. I like that. There was quite a good bit when they. I think it was when they their pod opened and all the other tag teams were kind of laid out mm. and they just went from one to the other. To yeah, that was kind of cool. Them, that was, that them was a cool little spot. I did quite like that. But yeah, I don't think it was. It was good. It was all right. Do you know what I also despise <laughs> is when like I think I think it might have been actually Mandy Rose hit that hit a finisher on Sasha and then Sasha kicked out and then she tried to pin her again. Straight away. It's like, why are you doing that? Yeah. It, it, hit the move again. Do something. Hit her again. Why are you trying to pin her? She picked it out the first time. She's had another five seconds to come round. Why are you trying to pin her again? Yeah. Won't work. Don't happen. Never happened mm. in a million years. Who's ever pinned somebody for the second time and they've stayed down for three? I think like, the only time I've ever seen that is probably on the WWE game. Brilliant. What's happened to me? Brilliant. <laughs> Sound. Good yeah. one. <laughs> that's great. But that's it. That, yeah, that's literally, it doesn't happen. Like, why it's, do it? It's, it's, it's why? Just, yeah. Just a waste of a spot. I'm, my um, voice is breaking. I'm getting that angry. The, I thought the uh, the Usos and Shane and Miz match was pretty good. I, I like the Usos. I think the Usos are probably one of the best tag teams. Don't wagging like the wagging the, the belts back. Don't make any sense. Yeah, building this whole thing around. Now they're doing it again at Fastlane. Why? Yeah, building this whole thing around sort of Shane and Miz being this best tag team, and they've literally the dropped ma- the title. At the, the match, first is, match yeah, the best. match itself was fine. Like uh, Shane's so good. Like as an old man, he just doesn't give a shit. Oh, he is. He? is. Like that, that when he hit yeah. that curse to curse and went for the second one and he got super kicked. I'm fairly certain he just got glassed in the jaw with that super kick when he come down. I, I, I wince whenever he does that. He it did looks it in so a brutal. Survivor Series match. It must have been like 2017 and Roman Reigns speared he him got concussed, and legitimately he? knocked him out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you could just see like he didn't know what day week. That was rough. That one. I like so the match itself was fine. It was. I like the Miz. I love the Miz. I like the Miz is really good. I don't. Yeah. I don't hate anyone involved in the match. I just like. I, I get a real beam up on it when. Um, 
when the tag division's being held for ransom like it is. Yeah. Any division, really. Like, I just think you've got so... Lim- like, wrestling obviously doesn't have weight classes other than cruiserweight and, and heavyweight. But... Like it just really pisses me off because you've got that fewer weight, like that fewer classes of things people can compete for, mm. and yet you just muggy it up with these like middle-aged people, people who should be kind of around the title scene, but you haven't got enough room for them. It's it, WWE's just got this real kind of car crash that doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. and, and I think they should be giving that tag title shot to to guys who are actual legitimate full-time well, tag teams. They don't build enough of the actual tag teams they've got to the point where you don't see any of it. Not at all. Uh, I mean, so we, we have we have a program with, you know, like, at the, now it's like the Usos and then Miz and Shane McMahon, and that's all that will ever be referenced. Mm. And then they have these yeah. makeshift tag teams that come along, which the Miz and Shane McMahon were. But then you don't see Gallows and Anderson on TV for months. We don't no. see sanity. anything of where Sanity. Where did they go? Yeah, like, what's happening with Sanity? Offers I mean, a pain. What yeah, are they there's doing? There's so many of them that just aren't used, is it? It's just like, why? Like, why not? It seems so. It, it doesn't make any sense. It's like taking it's taking a part of your product and just cutting it out and just going, "Ah, oh, people don't want to see that." We'll they'd rather they'd rather just... do like three man. They'd like to do six man tags with just like random people pitted against each other. It's like, but yeah, but why though? Like, why would you rather do that? Yeah. It, it, uh, but, crazy. Yeah, it's sad. I'm, I mean, I'm glad they're back on the Usos because they're one of the consistent actual tag teams that have stayed around the the top spot, and I'm I'm glad the Usos have got the belts back, but. I mean, how long are they going to keep them? I mean, one of them's had that DUI recently. He could be going down for for whatever. Like, I I just don't understand it. I, I haven't understood it for months. I don't know where they're going with any. He got the DUI, and then won the title like, two days after. Doesn't make sense. When does like, that sense. when has that ever happened? Jeff Hardy did. I know he didn't. I don't think he was the US title champ, uh, title holder at the time. But you know, he he had a DUI and just they just carried on his push. It's like they almost don't care about that. They don't give a shit. There's other things that yeah. they really do obviously care about, and that's where they get released or whatever. But then it just seems to be something that is legitimately a, a shitty thing to do. Yeah, and it's just rewa- it's just rewarding them. Here, here Celebrities yeah, in America just now. do that shit, don't they? Yeah, athletes and sports stars tend to just go drink driving, and it's just one of them things where they're just like, "Oh yeah, that's fine. It's just part of the American culture." It's like, yeah, it's from whatever. Yeah, yeah it's man. crazy. Um, the next match was the I don't I, this. I didn't get this one. Baron Corbin and Braun Strowman. In a no DQ match that was that then Drew McIntyre it's, it's, and Bobby what's Lashley. the point in no DQ out? matches? Out. There ain't any point. Oh, was it? Um, was it? No, never mind. No, it's the main event. It was the, it was the other the other big lad. Um, I think it's something else. Right? Yeah, it was Lashley and McIntyre. Oh yeah, and then Lashley has a match later on in the night anyway. Yeah. Well, was that, no, it was after the IC. It was after the IC match, wasn't it? I'm was sure. it? I thought it was before. I don't I thought remember. It was, early it was all a blur to me. I, I was in. I was seeing red for the entire thing. At the minute, I don't. Get the entire it. match was just weird. Yeah, like they went yeah. through tables, went through all sorts. Is Strowman still injured? That I mean, that's what it looks like to me. I doubt it. Is he putting through two tables? Well, then, I don't know. Yeah, because uh, like, they put through two tables, and then the night after on Raw, they had another table match. Mm-hmm. I know Eric Strowman didn't go through any of them, but. But he's, he's not really some... taking any moves, is he? He's not taking any moves. He's just going through a couple of tables. It's like yeah, maybe yeah. they're just protecting him from some further injury. But what they're really doing is just making him look beatable, mm. build him as a monster, and then he's just beatable. Yeah. You know, we've yeah. had, we've seen him in like a rumble match when six guys jump on him and he throws them all off, and then it just takes two more to come in three and lads beat him up do something to him I just don't get it I don't get what they're trying to do I don't get why like... build that faction why do we need another faction like that uh, why do we yeah. need another faction why are we building this guy as a monster then showing him how easy they can beat him and they just slammed him through two it, tables like, like they did the shield powerbomb and I'm like why are you doing that for like you're not the new shield why are you doing that yeah like, what's the point yeah. is, that, is it a big it's... ooh that was cool so the big ladder put him through two tables like why why are you doing that to him yeah, I don't know. It's just it feels just, like another. They're trying to give like him. Another... They're trying to give him the baby face rub, but he's already a big baby face anyway, Braun Strowman. Like they don't need to beat him down like that to like no. try and get the crowd on his since, side. Like they already love him. Everybody loves Braun Strowman. Sort of Roman Reigns kind of you know went off. There's there's no one really that legitimately has had a decent feud with him. I don't think there is no. anyway. I don't think there is no. to the point of like I don't see what you what are we waiting for with. With Braun Strowman, are we kind of hanging on until, I don't like, know, man. you know, let's put the, we they obviously I think they want him to be a Universal Champion, but yeah. are we waiting until another, you know, 
what we wait. Brock for. won't put him over in any kind of good match. Brock's not bothered. I mean, he will do it, but yeah. he's never gonna he's never gonna give him the 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 good Brock match. He's just gonna give him the I'll suplex you a couple of times, hit your move on me, I'll sell it, and then I'm I'm done. Yeah. And that is that really the way you want to go over? Right, because as soon as someone goes over like that, the crowd aren't behind him. The crowd aren't no, bothered. Fo- Brock will bury you from the get go. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I I couldn't even think of a plan for him because he's he's such a hard character to book with the way you've we've got him because they've got him doing all this smiley, jokey, baby face catchphrase stuff. Mm. But then they're trying to put him over as this monster. But you can't have unbeatable and fun loving at the same time. It just no. doesn't make any sense. Um, you could have continued to book him strong. Like maybe book him like an Undertaker, or have him as this big, strong, imposing force. But they've ruined that now. So now they've just got this uh, half monster, half lovable giant, and it just—it's not—it's not working for anyone really. No, no, it's a strange, strange situation. They've kind of worked themselves into a corner with him, and I don't know if they really know what the plan is. Worked themselves into a shoot. Worked themselves into a shoot. Yeah, like and the the problem is you get a lot of guys around him as well who could have their own good runs but that once again just strapping a load of people into one storyline tying mm. them up to keep them busy like Bobby Lashley when he came in everyone was expecting well now we can have Lashley Lesnar but they've never touched they've never even been in the same no. camera shot together it's, it's, it's never even that been, doesn't make any never sense even been no. that either, has it, I don't think so no Maybe. not at all but that's the first thing that comes across everyone's mind because yeah. he's a legitimate mixed martial artist yeah, he's yeah. a beast you know I, I, don't, I don't know it doesn't make sense Again, didn't once like again. that match. Didn't like it. Um, Ronda Ronda Rousey against Ruby Riot. Didn't like it. Es- Pointless. Essentially a squash match. I mean, this match was just to carry on the storyline between Charlotte and then eventually Becky. Like, but why? Why? Why does Charlotte need <laughs> to come and sit at the side of the ring to watch this I match? I don't know. She even gets at the side of the ring. She just turned up after the. Oh, Charlotte. Oh, oh sorry, Charlotte, Charlotte did. Yeah, I thought Charlotte you meant Becky. Yeah, then, I thought you meant Becky. Becky comes out and. Yeah. yeah why did Charlotte Flair come out with a mic and get interviewed? And then just sit ringside. What did it make any odds and ends to her? No. She's, a, she's the women. She's like she's. A, a, why? What? I'd, why I'd put Ruby Riot in that situation? When Becky then came into. I like the ring, Ruby Riot. When Becky came into the ring and then started attacking Charlotte, I was like, "Well, if Ronda joins in, it'll put her more over and probably get the fans off her back." Mm. Because every time Ronda's on anything now, all the fans shout is "We want Becky." Did you hear how much oh, they yeah. turned down her music when, like, when they started playing? Like yeah. when Ronda came out, it yeah. dropped so much because they're just expecting massive boos for her, but yeah. they don't want them. The entire match itself sucked. It was really stupid. Ruby Wright got no offense in pretty much. She just beat her up, then she tapped no, her well, out. It was a squash match, and then she was kind of like rewarded. Well, well, you can have another match with her tomorrow on Raw. Yeah, and that, but and I mean, they, she looked cool as a Sonya Blade ring. I think that was the whole reason behind her having her there, probably just was. to show like Mortal Kombat. Yeah. She's dressed as Sonya Blade and she's doing Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and then Becky came out hobbling, S- hobbling along, them both. hobbling along, like obviously quite hurt. Comes to the ring, like they showed the thing before of Becky of Charlotte beating her up at like that live event. Yeah, so it was like, ooh, I wonder if she, Becky could be here tonight. Obviously not because she's hurt. And then all of a sudden she's in the crowd. She walks through. Why security didn't stop her before she got to the ring? I don't understand. <laughs> she gets, she hobbles herself into the ring, <laughs> lobs her crutches in, climbs in, stands there. She looked quite cool. She looked like Kill Bill. The entire thing reminded me of Kill yeah, Bill. Yeah, that's the idea, right? And then she, like when um, Ronda and when she like when Ronda picked the crutch up and Becky had the crutch, they had like do you know in the um. In the, is it the first Kill Bill when she fights the, the Chinese woman on that like outside in that snowy right. area mm. and they had like a shot where Ronda stood with this like stood with a crutch like yeah, holding it and yeah, Becky yeah. stood with, like down by her side yeah. and it looked like a it looked like a Kill Bill <laughs> face off from yeah. that thing I was like that's pretty cool but that's where she's only like, got one leg just beat the shit out of her that's where I was like both of you need to start wailing on Charlotte yeah now, and this will get Do you something. both over and really push it but why bring Becky back I don't know too early know. she's suspended for 60 days why bring her back this early why Crazy. And she's only got one knee. If if I'm not being funny, I'm, if somebody started hitting me with a crutch and they've only got one knee, I'm gonna find enough fucking wilt wherewithal to get up and just boot that knee as hard as I can. Yeah. And then and, and yeah, the whole it, photos afterwards as well of her like you know arms behind the back smiling and then you know the next day it's like well it's just the same photo they did with Austin. Yeah. Everything's the same yeah. and it's cool and it works. You know it works in the nineties and it's a different time now. Yeah. And we I'm not. I'm. Just I think I'm gone past too the man. Down that I'm road. past yeah. the man. I used to love it. I used to love Becky Lynch. I thought it was the entire thing was wicked, and now I'm just yeah. so past it. I, do, I I don't think Becky Lynch is all that great of a wrestler. 
No, I don't think I, she's a I good wrestler. I think she's a steady hand. I think that's she's why, fine. She's not that's bad. That's why they, in the first Women's Rumble 2017... Probably shouting a lot. It's really loud. Um, <laughs> in the first Women's Rumble 2017, that's why they had her and yeah. Sasha Banks in first two because she was running the match. She's really fine. She's a really. She's, she's a, not a good bad wrestler. Great. She's good. Yeah, she's she's good at working. But she's not on Charlotte's out. level. But no, she's not up there with she's, Charlotte. She's not on Charlotte and Oscar's level at all. Like, I, I'm I'm very much of the same opinion. Like when she first was doing the whole like badass natural turn thing like when she had her nose bust open and all, yeah, all that kind that. of stuff yeah wicked. great but it feels like someone's just gone oh this is like Stone Cold Steve Austin and just herded their way right through it yeah. and just tried to do that corporate yeah. WWE thing of where they they'll find a, a slogan or a buzzword and they'll just ram it into people's throats and it just inst- that's just an instant turn off to me yeah. to be honest I don't want her in the main event I don't want her anywhere near it I'd rather just watch Charlotte and Ronda again mm. and, and watch watch them have a decent match a couple of arm bars and then that's it I'm just, I, I don't care for Becky Lynch anymore I'm I bored of her she got herself over so well on her own and then it's not yeah she did it's not she did a, yeah and it's not until the producers and the writing of the creative team then went right we'll take over from here now this is what you're going to be doing mm. no, the, and that's what's ruined it the entire thing for me is if she's injured why would you get involved why would you get involved why would you do it you already got the shit kicked out of you she tried to interfere in that live event against charlotte and charlotte beat the piss out of her so if you're telling me that even though Becky jumped Charlotte at that live event, Charlotte still beat her up. If she can come out with one knee and two crutches, how can she beat a fully fit Charlotte? How can she do that? Hmm. Yeah. Doesn't how does make that make any now. sense? Doesn't make any sense. No. Why do it? Just leave her off TV for like, because this is the thing, this is the thing, it's always been the same. Like when it was CM Punk went away with the title and he came back like a week and a bit later. Like yeah. that could have been one of the best things ever for CM Punk to leave with the WWE title for like yeah. a long, like a month, a month and a half, yeah. like just not show up anywhere. Maybe show up in some indies somewhere, like just showing the title, not not wrestling, but just showing the title. But they didn't. They just, they just, they bring it back a week later. Same with Becky. She gets suspended for sixty days, and you think, oh shit, like she's gone. Yeah. And then like maybe like in a month later at Fastlane, have a like run through the crowd and just like jump in and beat the shit out of somebody and yeah, then run away. Yeah. Like why bring them back one week later? Give, give us like give us the opportunity to miss her. It wasn't even a week, was it? Because it was Tuesday night. Smack, was it Monday night Raw? So that's that's six days, and she's already back in the ring. Yeah. Why? What's yeah. the point? They, they, they always do that though. They have these stories. They always, that yeah, they could. they've always done it. But like I'm saying, but like, why stri- did they not get yeah. Vince? Uh, and then if, again, for me, Vince would come out on Monday Night Raw and be like, "Right, Becky, you were suspended for sixty days. You're now suspended for ninety days because you've you just violated your terms of your, your, your suspension." Like, but they don't say, "Oh, they're like, oh, right, that happened. That's fair enough. That's fine. That's no worries." Doesn't make no, any they sense. Think, yeah. They they think that if you don't continually have someone on TV week after week after you week after about. week, you'll forget about them. It's this kind of it's this weird like bad marketing version of marketing where they think like oh if you if you make something you have to have all the information out there permanently all the time because people need to consume all the time when really you you make something famous and you make something big and popular by limiting dem- limiting like access to it yeah like you look at when sting was off tv for a full year back in the 90s and when he came back it was like the biggest thing in the yeah, world and um, Austin used to miss TV regularly. Like you'd have him, you'd have him off TV for a few weeks, and then he'd, he'd just come back out yeah, of it's nowhere. Yeah, such a big draw when they come back. Same with it, like Taker when Taker comes back for like his first time in a year. You're like, oh my god, it's fucking minutes. Yeah, Taker, yeah. I haven't seen him forever, and he's shit every time. And he's awful. People, you still every get goosebumps, year, you and you're still like, it. oh my god, he's back. You can't help it. I think the thing with like the like the Becky thing, like you were saying, Tom, like we we need to keep her on there so people don't forget about her. It's not just about the TV anymore. She can keep that presence up on social media. Yeah. Her Twitter, the she things can. that she was putting on Twitter. Twitter were absolutely amazing. She could be on, mm. she could be off TV for sixty days, like a year, and yep. if she's still going on Twitter and yep. doing stuff like that, that, that's that's what's keeping everybody interested. Well, because it's, it's like more the, of a medium than just the TV now. The nose injury was the best thing that happened to her because it took her took her out of the picture like, for a little while. Took her out. And I feel like if they did that more organically and just went, yeah, she's suspended until the day after WrestleMania, yeah. and she was just gone. And then maybe like a couple of weeks before Mania, she manages to find a way to force herself back in. Yeah, like she goes back a up. talking point. It it would make so much more sense. And then you could have a dusty yeah. finish. You could have a win the belt, and then they could be like, "Well, she's suspended. She can't win the belt." Mm. Like, do you know? Do you know what I mean? You could do stuff like that. There's so many options. That, it they made just me turn laugh down. Um, when when uh, Triple H and Steph and Vince and Shane came out on that episode of Raw and said, "Like, you guys are the authority now. It's all you know. We listen to you." We're gonna make this all better, and then two weeks later, he's doing a, a promo and, and says to Charlotte, "It's not about them, Charlotte. You listen to me." Yeah. I'm like, "Hang on a minute. Two weeks ago, he said it was all about the fans, and now you're saying it's nothing to do with us." Like, come on. The thing for me is, 
I will never not love Vince McMahon. You can put anybody in that ring. You could put, you could bring CM Punk back or anybody back. And then if you put Vince McMahon in the ring or in that situation, I'm going to love Vince McMahon 10 times more than I love anybody else. Like when he, when when he came out and he what was like, uh, Kevin Owens? well, it's like anything. Him. Like when he when he came out when when asked uh, when Charlotte was uh, Becky was in the ring, and he was like, you know, you're doing all this stuff about you're the man. Well, you're not. I'm the man. And I was like, yes, you are, Vince. Yeah, Fucking yeah. love that. That's brilliant. And I was like, I'm cheering that's Vince. The sad, that's and the sad thing though. They're all like, booing him in the crowd, I, and I'm like, why are you booing him? He's the man. The modern the modern WWE roster can't get over the biggest bad guy in wrestling. No. Whereas. Even when you go back to Ruthless Aggression era, I hated it when Vince had come out and he'd yeah. be acting like a complete dick. Yeah. I absolutely hated him. And you hated him in the Attitude era, but this roster is so th- it's just so full of people who have no idea who their characters are and mm. are just listening to a script writer that Vince is the best character ever. He's the Always. best one. Yeah. And but like back in back in the you know the mid two thousands, like he was he was still the bad guy. He was still yeah, the guy who'd come out was. and he'd be like, Oh god, here he is. Here yeah. he comes, yeah. but now you're like, oh, thank God, at least there's someone who can act. Back, yeah. At least there's someone who can do his job. Yeah. Yeah. But you, even now, you look at guys who are pretty talented, like Samoa Joe or uh, AJ Styles or someone like that, and I still just go, oh God, you're barely even a wrestler. Mm. You're just a joke. Mm. It's like I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm, I'm just not interested in them. I just, I just think they're yeah. all just jokes. The writers make them make them look stupid and and make them look like they don't care about what they're doing. Yeah. But they're so good. I don't know. Man. What can you? What can you do? What, what can you can do? You do right? it? It's it's a bit. What can you do with any of them? It's a bit sort of like short memory, isn't it? Really, they just forget. You know, we all know what's going on because we can watch it back. And I'm like, I'm sure you guys can watch it back as yeah. well and see what you've you know said one week to the next, and then just flipped on it. It's it's crazy. But yeah. yeah um, oh, but the know. so the men's match, the men's elimination chamber match, was was that next? I think that was one of the last ones. Yeah, I, I was one of the better ones yeah. for me. I was one of I'm the saying, better. Was that the next match? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, I'm sure it was. What about Finn Balor, Bobby Lashley? Finn, oh yeah, sorry, Finn Balor and Bobby Lashley. Come on, Rob. Yeah, sorry. Come on. I always. I forgot about the match as well, Rob. To be fair, so I won't really worry about it. Though. It was just a foregone conclusion. This match. Yeah. Yeah. You just knew what was going to happen. It's like it, it, you just knew it from the minute it kicked off. It's like, well, Finn, Finn's going to win this one, so I'm, I'm not even that invested. But again, I, I did. I, I like Finn Balor. I don't mind I feel Finn like Balor. He's paid his dues now. But like, why? Why make it a handicap match? Uh, yeah, that's another thing. The thing is with Leo Rush, right? Leo Rush got no time on the NXT, did he? Really, like, not a lot at all. He was almost well. He got signed. He got signed like the week after he did that no sell pile driver for yeah, a table, I hate which I hate him for. I always hate just, him for. I, you know, I can. I think Jim Cornette Despising. is still probably kicking off about yeah, that now. Yeah, yeah. Then he gets signed to NXT. He has two or three sort of house shows, and then all of a sudden he's, he Oscar. got released because he said, you know, he tweeted he out about shit, Emma. Oh, you weren't ready for Oscar, yeah. and everyone kicked off at him. Yeah, and then he's signed to Two or Five Live, and then he's not really on Two or Five Live. No, he isn't. Just he doesn't Bobby wrestle. He's just his valet, isn't he? Valet. Yeah. But he's such a good wrestler, and he's so great. But because they gave him no mm. time to develop his style, his in-ring work, how lethal he is. <laughs> It He's made him. It well. made him look like he was just running away from Finn Balor, and it, like you're just running away from him, like just scared of him. And I'm like, you're a really good wrestler. Why are you scared of Finn Balor? Like, fight him. Yeah. Do some flips. Doesn't do make some, sense. Do some like mental like, shit. The worst part is now they've brought Ricochet in, who does everything Leo Rush does, yeah, but better, a lot yeah. better yeah. in a in a better yeah. package. Yeah. And it just feels like such a such a kind of just like useless, your you know. your career is completely pointless now. I mean, yeah. he's a better talker than than uh, Ricochet by a long, long way. Like, he's a much, much better talker than Ricochet. Yeah. But are they going to... I'm like, what happened with the guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's a strange one. Like, they did the whole thing, you know, so Bala wins and then they... then Lashley slam, you know, smashes him in or whatever. I, I've read some stuff today... Smashed that his that's, face in. That's so, um, there's a bit of backstage heat on Leo Rush, apparently, and that's why... It wouldn't surprise me. He comes, off, he comes across punishment. as a massive prick, doesn't he? So it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. yeah. He I gives that energy um, off. That he he rubs dickhead. people up the wrong way, I think, and I think he doesn't know how to act around the more sort of tenured... Yeah. He looks that like... Enzo Amore. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. Um... But I'm glad I'm glad Balor won the. Yeah, it went all right, match. It wasn't anything. Bad about that. It's it nice right. to give Balor yeah, something. It's nice to finally give Balor some recognition after he dropped the Universal Title because he's really done nothing of no, any yeah. note since then. No. Um, so yeah, no, it's, one, has he, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, on to the main event then, the men's chamber match. Probably one of the better ones. Yeah. For me, again, I it, it were good. all right. It was good, and what I did like about it is that people were eliminated before everybody was out of the pods I think that's you know 
that yeah, oh, it's important. Speaking that. of pods, what wound me up the most about the entire entire night was that they still did the overhead like who's going to be when they had the gauntlet match to decide the order they were going to come in anyway. <laughs> Why? Yes. What are you doing it's that for? Absolutely pointless. And I'm like, at the, at the end, match, just to see who goes in last, though, I think wasn't it? Are you sure? I think it was. I don't even think still. It was the, it even was still, order. was it Rand, Randy Orton and Jeff Hardy that were the yeah. last two? AJ Styles in the middle of the ring, like switching between, like looking between the two, and yeah. it's like the match decided. Like we know, it, we, we know, know it's going to be now. Like what are you doing? And it's like up, up top, it's like flashing the lights. Like who could it be? Who could it be? I'm like, I know it is because I watched I watched SmackDown like yeah. the other night. I know it's going <laughs> to be. So should you, AJ? If I were AJ, I'd be facing like the pods, getting ready for it because I know he's going to come out. Yeah. Of it. Why? Was, Noise me. It. There were some good spots in it. I think Kofi made a a great account of himself yeah I'm happy for Kofi it seems awfully to me like it's pretty ironic that it's like the Daniel Bryan whole like Wrestlemania story like the the B plus player kind of thing mm. but it's just flipped to like, now he's the or he's the person that is like kind of fighting against to be it and apparently there's no plans for Kofi at Wrestlemania there's no plans for him currently as of right now for what, Wrestlemania what I didn't really get is when Daniel Bryan then came out he brought Rowan with him and then they yeah. were like, right, yeah. you've got to go back. Well, what's he going to do? He can't get yeah, in. Yeah, he can't get in it. So what's the point? to get in the No, you can't cell. physically get inside the chamber, so why are you here? Why are you here? A, why are you here? And B, why are you telling him to why do Why send one? him away? Yeah. Just like, what's, he can't get in. Can't just let him stand out the side. And yeah. then he's pointless being out there anyway. Yeah, he just stood there like what a lemon. What did Daniel Bryan think was going to happen? Like, no. he brought him down to ringside. It's like, he's not in the match, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, like, so why, why are you so you good? Yeah. I did like, I did good? like the little bit of with, with Daniel Bryan when he was kind of like running away and like jumping up to the top of the pod. Yeah, and he was like sat on the crazy, like, I like Kofi, like, got on I think he's pretty good. I like that. But I just, it's cool. What I don't get about that is, and he he did it he did it in a tag match once when he was brilliant, where we I think he was on the, against the bar and he just did the trust fall into the bar, and it's like you've got a move called the trust fall against yep. two people, people you're supposed you're to be fighting, fighting against. against. Yeah. If you're those yeah. two people, you need to fight. Well, I'm going to let you with the floor yeah. then, yeah. because you shouldn't trust me because no, I'm trying to I'm beat, you. beat you. I yeah, don't make get any it. sense, is it? Why does any, why do any of them jump? I do any of them topes or like spring rolls make sense? Just move, move out the way. Move, not rocket science. No. If you if, if I if I'm outside like getting me wherewithal, I'm like oh fucking hell, he just lobbed me out of that ring, and I look up and see you hitting the ropes and running towards me. I'm just gonna move. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna you let you jump, do, do and you know I'll know just did move. Actually, do that. Samoa Joe used to do it all the time, didn't he? Samoa Joe did it in the Rumble against Johnny Gargano. He used to do it all the time in the Indies. Yeah, mm-hmm. where Johnny Gargano goes to jump onto him and he just walks out of the way. Yeah, in, like, that's that's what you should do. That's in the perfect. Indies, like yeah, Chris Fanny, like in TNA, he'd do it all the time. Like somebody would go for like a big springboard or something like that, and he just like he'd be like ready for walk it, off. and then at the last second he'd just like walk away. Yeah. Like, that's really cool. I like that. That's... Also in that match, why did Kofi Kingston grab the rope? Is there is is a rope break in the Elimination Chamber? No, they never used to be. It never used to be part of the Elimination Chamber. So because... I don't. I... AJ, I don't know, AJ, like AJ, 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 cranking the, cranking the calf crusher, and he like crawled to the ropes and grabbed it, and then AJ yeah. just let go, and I was like, why are you letting go? It's no holds barred though. It's, it's no always elimination change of chambers are no holds barred, so it doesn't make any sense because like by by that merit you can't throw them into the cage, exactly. you can't if smash can, them on the outside. If I can slam you into them pods into the cage into the, like, the iron floor, why can you then hold the rope to get a rope break? Why can you do that? The good ones used to have weapons in them. Like when Triple H used to bring yeah, the sledgehammer like, in, yeah, like the X would slide it through the. Like back when it was good and everyone was pissing blood and yeah. Yeah. massive. Juicy. What the thing about it as well, I noticed, is how big Randy Orton looks compared to everybody he else. He looks massive. like Kane. He's like, he's he looks old, like Kane. He's one of the old style of bodies, though, isn't he? Like that. He's not. He's not a yeah, man. I miss that shit. Yeah. He did a good RKO on Styles. When Styles yeah, he did. He did do a good RKO. It was nice, like, nice callback to when AJ like faked him out that one time. Yeah, like AJ went to hit the about final year ago. And, and he like and he dropped his back because he wasn't a bit yeah. income in the ring. It was a nice call back to that to like grab him with it. It was pretty cool. I like Randy Orton. I've got no. I like Randy Orton. It wasn't the worst match. I think. No, no, no. Yeah, it was a really good match. Them, when it got down to Kofi and Daniel Bryan, I was like, this is this would be a great match on its own. This. Yeah. They were really. They really. Well, they're doing it at Fastlane. Yeah, now, they put the graft in. Which there. is now like the Fastlane main event, main event is going to be is. Kofi and Daniel Bryan. And like, what I didn't get is like, when you well every time you have kind of one of these and it's not one of the big four elimination chamber but it's up there i would put sort of elimination chamber and and money in the bank as sort of the second level like of the marquee yeah. sort of pay-per-view yeah the night after or the or the show after whatever oh, brand they're on it they just do the same match again yeah it, sorry, it wasn't Daniel Bryan it wasn't AJ cranking the calf crusher it was Daniel Bryan with a yes look wasn't yes, it yes that, that, that was it yeah, that was yeah. It. 
Um, yeah, they just do the same thing over again. It's it's like, what's again. The point? Also, I love this cover thing. I think it's really cool. I'm excited to see where it goes. I'd love to see him with the title for maybe a little bit, but you can't keep letting him beat Daniel Bryan clean if he's not going to beat him in a one-on-one match. You just yeah. you can't. Yeah, keep I agree. Him. Like he beat him clean. He didn't beat him clean technically in that gauntlet match. So I think didn't like rowing. No, he did because he, he went to hit the knee, didn't he? And, like hit into trouble in paradise. Yeah. Um, and then he beat him last night. Um, yeah. In that like clean tag. both both clean yeah. finishes. But if you're going to go on one-on-one. You can't, you can't keep losing to him in those situations because it just doesn't make any sense. Well, this is the thing at the minute, like, and I get that it's like, oh, he's, he's Daniel Bryan is like taking it one step further because he's got to defend yeah. his title and he's got to keep his title and stuff like that. But just you can't keep winning in them situations, and then it gets to that minute, and then you just can't do it. Like it just well, seems a bit daft. If we look at the 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 Raw and the SmackDown after Elimination Chamber, there were three matches that involved champions, and all those champions got pinned clean. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, it's true. Actually. You got Daniel Bryan. Uh, yeah. You've Daniel got Bryan the got the revival. Off, eh? We've got the, the revival. Got, got yeah. pinned clean off, um, off Champa and Gargano, Champa. and then Ma- Mandy Rose rolled up Oscar. Yeah. Like, what's that? What's that saying? It's I mean, saying it's nothing like, matters. Yeah. yeah. Saying nothing matters. I know. That's, every time, I know. Like, we kind of get a bit irate about this, and it all, and it always kind of makes me think of the Uncle Dave Meltzer quote of like, the problem is you're trying to apply logic to wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> And I get that, and I get that, and then uh, maybe what we're really saying is like, if you're wanting to sell this to us as if it's this whole thing and everything matters, when you make something that doesn't matter, don't expect us to get to not get wound up about it. Yeah, that's what no, it's right about. enough. I think the, the thing you've got to consider is like things in wrestling shouldn't be difficult. When something happens, it should happen for a reason that moves the story forward. Yeah. Now, if you're going to have your tag team champions, for example, beaten by two people who've just been called up for the sake of it, for the sake of a few ratings pops, like have that story go somewhere or just use two random tag team competitors. If yeah. you're going to have your women's champion get pinned by someone, have that go somewhere or just have just have somebody else take a pin just have is, there's literally no point in having that happen if no. you're not going to pull the trigger on it at some point down the line like i get the building kofi with daniel bryan i get they're trying to do that but like you said ethan all it's going to cause is frustration that yeah he's beat the champ clean twice but all that means is the chances of him winning at fast lane and beating him three times yeah, clean like are almost nothing yeah. so you know he's going to lose at fast yeah. lane so what's yeah. the point in buying the pay-per-view and exactly. watching it there's no point and so stuff like this should be really simple and I suppose that's why you try and apply that logic because you think if this was done right and done logically this would actually be really entertaining and I could invest in that story and yeah. maybe look back at it again at some point yeah but I don't know he should have been I mean he should have been he nearly got there and then last the, the, the Smackdown that was on Tuesday he nearly got the pin but didn't that would make it more believable yeah, that that he, totally he would probably. be more yeah. inclined to think well maybe you can get him he's at close to doing it yeah. he's getting there he's you know getting closer it would have been, it would have been better if he'd have just got you know he pinned Samoa Joe for that, that only... six tag in or if he just got to a point where he could have pinned him and Rowan could have pulled him out and Anything. saved him yeah yeah in that yeah. situation it only hurts Kofi Kingston for him to lose at Fastlane like there's no winning situation for Kofi Kingston you can't yeah, keep you beat you him twice keep, yeah you can't keep doing this shot where the New Day come out and carry him off and like he's getting applauses like if, if, if he's come close to beating him and like you said like Rowan's split up and like got a DQ or Daniel's just like got a roll up and beat him with the tights like that makes you think oh my he could actually do this like he could be he's been so close to beating him yeah. But now he's going to come into that ring, and I can guarantee you, Michael Cole or somebody's going to go. Now remember, folks, he's already beat Daniel Bryan twice, and you're like, well, I know now that he's not going to win, then don't I? Yeah. Because you've already exactly. told me he's done it twice. Yeah. And, and then, and then, and then when he does lose, it's just like, well, what was the point in that entire thing then? If he's, he's just got, lost, Kofi's got an even bigger problem as well because if Daniel Bryan uses shenanigans, it look like a mugs. It's like, well, he, he's only got one boy, you've got two. It's exactly, like, yeah, why yeah. don't you use them? Yeah. So if, da- and, oh, if Daniel Bryan uses Rowan, all, it, it just makes happen. him look like an idiot. That's going to happen now. They're going to, they're going to, oh. Rowan's going to be like jumping, and then New Day are going to run in and like stop him from like causing a DQ or something, aren't they? And then, and then Kofi's like, still going to New Day are going to so end up no causing sense. him a DQ, yeah. Something like that. So like the referee's going to look around and Biggie will be there, yeah. like stood over Daniel Bryan, yeah. and he'll disqualify him, and it'll be like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, fucking lazy bastards. Just give Kofi the belt. It's a do nothing belt anyway. It doesn't matter. Made a fucking cardboard for God's sake. Well, I think Very they've true. invested so much in this whole eco war. Exactly, they're not, they're they're not going to take it off. They're not change that belt. Oh, no, and, exactly. no and he's doing a good job, and all in fairness yeah. to him, like if you want to do this, do it at Mania. Like if you want to do this entire thing, put it on the Mania stage. But apparently, there's no plans currently. Apparently, they've this plan for AJ's an outsider to come in and face him, like. um 
Kevin Owens is coming back soon. Yeah. Sami Zayn's cleared to return. John Cena maybe. Um, there's no plans for Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston at Mania, which again makes you think, what's the point in doing it? Because if you, if you're going to do it, don't do it before Mania. Do it yeah. after Mania. Like do it mid year. Mm. Do it mid year, and there's no there's nobody in the back of their mind going, this could be the Mania main event. Yeah. This like just don't you get, don't be, yeah. give the, don't give people the chance to even think that. Just do it mid year, and then if he doesn't win it, doesn't win it. Like don't get so close to Mania and then go. You know that feud you really everybody like really loved. You know that Kofi Kingston that you love him. Well, he is Kevin Owens to face uh, AJ, yeah. uh, AJ, uh, Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania, and you're just like, oh right, well that's a bit fucking stupid, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. I just think I don't know. Maybe that's the problem when you've got so many people on a writing team. There's just it's not too many. They all conflict to each other. There's no one clear vision of where no. they want to go, no. and I think that maybe ruins it. It's probably it. That's probably it. Um, a couple of well, a couple four NXT. They're not even call ups. They were just appearances. Appearances. Mm. And yeah, it's great to see. I mean, I think we all probably prefer NXT as the brand out of the all, all three anyway. But I don't get why they weren't call ups because Gargano and Champa are still the champions in NXT mm. of the NXT championship and the North American one they still when they came out and Do you know what I think it is they just, had the just... NXT graphics on when they were I've just realised something <laughs> Superstar Shake Up's coming soon yeah so what they're going to do for the next few months is every so often call up some NXT guys bring them out with the NXT logos, stuff like that, to cement the, the, the casual fans' minds that that is an NXT superstar. Yeah, and maybe. And then the superstar shake-up, they'll get loads of call-ups, and they'll be like, where's this guy going to get drafted to? And they'll get drafted to the main shows, and that'll be the way they call them up. It makes sense it's for selling a, a few more... Um, because then, it makes sense for selling a few network subscriptions because, for the yeah, kids who don't know NXT. And then they're saying, at that point, if you've seen them a couple of times on Raw and SmackDown, you're going to know the names, so it's not like a random person that's just coming up, so the casual yeah. fans are going to know who they are. So I think that's probably why they're doing it. And again, I'm like you say, I'm not, I'm not against it. Like it's fine. Um, again, like the way to do a call up is to just do a surprise. Surely you should never like announce that somebody's going to get called up. No, for I me, for me anyway. Do, I don't know about you. When Shinsuke got called up, that was quite a good way of doing yeah. it. Yeah, just interrupted the Miz and his music started and everyone went crazy. Crazy, yeah. That's, That's really how cool. You should do Kevin it. Owens like came out. Yeah. I still has an NXT champion and yeah. came out and beat Cena up. Um, in sanity, recent years, sanity, they have like... got they have got um, worse at doing it. Like like you say, I think Shinsuke might be the last one that I remember being at any in any way kind of a shock or any way kind of significant. Mm. Um, well, because now they they announce it weeks in advance, mm. coming too. Yeah, they did it with. It's, it's the worst way to do anything. Guys recently with with like new Lacey. kids. I mean, what, yeah. what's why did she come out? Why did, why did she come, come out, out and then turn around and go back? And she know. did it on. Raw. I don't know what it means. Oh, SmackDown. I can't. I don't know. What I don't know what to do with it. It's like the Emelina thing. Like, what does it mean? I don't think we know what to do with it. No. What does it? What, what does it, it all mean? Do what does, what it, does it, all, it all mean? What does it all mean? I don't know why she came out. She just kind of came out and looked at the crowd. Was it as if to say, "Oh, I don't like this place." But it's like, but Lacey, you aren't in a match, love. So what does it matter if you do come out anyway? Yeah. Nobody's gonna fight you. You're not. You're not scheduled. You're not booked. It was. Um, I'm not booked, Ted. <laughs> it was good. To see, it was good to I'm see those four guys on the sort of main roster and. But I just think, like, like we mentioned earlier before we started recording, like I don't think half the crowd knew who they were. I just no. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think the the, the raw crowd was just awful. And it, no, I just think, I just think that yeah. crowd was awful anyway. I don't think it would have mattered. It, like, I think if that you put that somewhere else, I think that crowd would have acted a lot differently. But that that crowd just would just dog shit. So I don't think it really mattered where it was. But I think apparently, I, don't, I, I say I've not watched SmackDown, but I think Ricochet got a better reaction. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And stuff he like did. that. And so. Alistair Black did as well. Against, I think it was just a crowd, if I'm honest against with you. I think it was just a crowd. Pretty, um, against Andrade, the second night on SmackDown, it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, coming back to what we were, what you were saying about you know the shake-up thing coming, um, on Raw, Sasha and Bailey came out and didn't have a match, but just did a bit of a promo about their titles and mm. made a, a point of, like, we'll defend these on Raw, SmackDown, NXT... Anywhere. Well, they'll have to, won't they? Because I think that's why they're not, they're not given a colour. They've not given like a brand colour. No. Because they've realised that they haven't got that many female wrestlers, so they'll just de- they'll just defend them across all platforms. No, but it would be yeah. good to see if they did, you know, do an NXT TV taping. It'd be quite interesting. Yeah. Or, or well, a, it'll bring people in, won't it? But it'll, then they're, they're going to win anyway because they're not going to win. But it'll bring, but it'll still bring people in to watch it, won't yeah. it? Like if you're, if you're, it's like you were saying, Tom. Like if you're the casual fan. And you're you're on Twitter and you see WWE tweet out like this Wednesday Sasha and Bailey on NXT TV. 
you're probably going to, if you've already got the network anyway, which nine times out of ten you're going to have it, yeah. just go and just jump onto the network and watch an hour of NXT and like learn about some new people. Like It makes a lot of business sense, I would say. But yeah, like you say, you you know pretty much full well that they're not going to lose, are they? Like, yeah, let's be honest. The titles like like, who, but again, who's, yeah. in, who's in NXT right now that's a tag team, that's a female tag team? There isn't one. I don't think there is one. I don't actually think you've got um, you've got the four horse women. What they're called, Shafir and yeah, Jessamine. Yeah, Junk, the last yeah. with the mask. Jessamine yeah, yeah. and Marina Shafir. Fabulous. Yeah, Jessamine Junk. That's the name. It's a Jesse Minge. That's a <laughs> terrible name. Um, I, I suppose <laughs> you'd have um, Dakota Kai and Nixon Neal, but she's in Dakota so Kai. That's not gonna. That's not gonna do anything. But you're right. There isn't really anything. Might be an option. Might be an opportunity no. to make some, maybe make some new tag teams. But again, you don't really need any more tag teams. No. There's so many tag teams in wrestling. Just make some singles guys and give them a good rub. One thing that did annoy me on Raw was they've done this thing with with Ambrose again, just jobbing out, oh, losing yeah. a match. You don't like you don't like much complaining, do you, Rob? I just don't know what like. <laughs> it, I, and we must still. In, it must be a work. He must. He's got. He's gonna leave. I'm telling you now. I'm. I. I think he's confident leaving. Confident that he's. But gone. I just don't yeah. know what they're doing with him. But why would he hate This is what I'm saying whole, though. Like, why? Why would they? Do, the way why out, would they do this? Yeah. Why, yeah. Why, why would they do this to him if he's not gonna go? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Because they did a little segment but, afterwards with him and Seth out. But out then again, we like, say that they're like mates again now. And yeah. It's like you've just been feuding for months. Yeah. And now it's that's why I think he's leaving because I think they're just like giving him all the shit to deal with until he gets there. Yeah, I read something today. But then like Dash and Dawson, they complain until they got tag titles. So like, what? (laughs) I don't really know. I read something today about Ambrose. How there's a thing where they think they're gonna briefly get the Shield back at Mania, and that's what's gonna lead to Seth beating Brock, where Ambrose and Roman Reigns will come in and cause something, which then. If he does, he's a backstabbing little bastard. But then all that... and he needs to fucking he needs to fucking stop this shit. He, he needs to go to AEW and be John Moxley and bleed for fucking pennies on the pound. That's all, what I want to see. All that means I don't want to see none of this shit. All that really does is just show you that Brock is still massive. too strong. He's still too strong, and it's taken three people to beat him. If that's what's even Roman Reigns never loses. Even... <laughs> <laughs> I hope like, he never like, loses. Like, like, even he's Roman great. Reigns couldn't beat him, and he's like the strongest man on the planet, and he couldn't beat him with that after numerous moves. So yeah. why can oh I just don't understand? Um, SmackDown they had another match with Ricochet against Eric Young. Nice to see Sanity back on TV. Yeah. The only thing that I really noted down from this was Sanity had been on, off TV for so long that Eric Young's lost his hair, and he's visibly <laughs> he? bold now. Brilliant. And like that's how long you keep. That's how long time's passed. That's how long it's been. And are, then, you, are you sure he NXT hadn't just shaved room, it, Rob? <laughs> well, then you can see it on the top. In NXT, see what on the top is bald? Faction in NXT, sanity that have just been. Let's ruined. go back to this hair thing. Why do you know he's bald? You can see he's like got the little bit in the middle. Why does that mean he's, he's got that little cap? That old little yeah, the old sort of little sun catcher. Not not quite a <laughs> skullet kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's not Jesus. It's not a cho- it's not a chosen thing. He had, no, he had decided like, to. It's, like, it's all going on the top, and he's just like, right, that's enough now. I'm it's probably the stress of the road, mate. Stress probably of the, the stress road of life. Working your ass off. Yeah, I don't think he's been. I don't think he's been on the fucking road. I don't know, I don't know where he's been. He's not been traveling. Really. No. They travel. They'd be like, Vince, you um, you, you, you got you got out for me tonight, Vince. He's like, ah, I'll come back to you, pal. He's like, uh, okay. Show up at the show up at the docks at four fifteen. <laughs> I've still got a job for you. <laughs> you gotta be there at work. Take yeah, it I thought it was zoom. such a good stable though that I don't know what they're doing with him and it's such a shame it goes back to that like with, they would rather slap two people together and be like you're a tag team now and I think we're going to put the title on you than actually use the legitimate tag teams that are there it goes back to push, like so. bar undisputed era stables don't really work like there's a very odd like you get DX you get undisputed mm. era you get like the odd one that's wicked but nine times out of ten when there's too many in it you're just like I don't really know what you're going to do with him like, yeah. what options have you got at that point Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. It's it's it is true. Stables are one of them things that are really tough to work. I mean, I remember when TNA had about twelve of them on the roster, yeah. and it was just all like ridiculous gang warfare. But if everybody's in a in a club, then being in a club ain't special. And I think Sanity are like when when they put them together, they did feel like a group of people who were like, well, maybe we could probably do more with each years, but we don't really the, know right now. The thing is though, with like everyone being in a stable, like they, that kind of works in New Japan. 
But they're more sort of teens, aren't they? Really? They're but like more they're more like, like you're like the houses are like like fucking hog, like Harry Potter. It's like you're, you're they don't all dress the same. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, they, like in New Japan, true. they don't all have to wear the similar all, like, uniform. All, like, they've got their own identities, but they're just signed yeah. like signed to a label almost. It's like if you like signed to a record label, but you're just a wrestler instead. Yeah. Um, speaking yeah. of DX, the, the the first people to be announced Break it down. this year have been in the um, in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Which is good. Uh, I'm just happy that China's now in, yeah, in the Hall of Fame. and they even referenced China. Triple H actually even referenced China, that China, on, China. on Raw that China would yeah. be in there. Big up to the X. And, um, <laughs> be good seeing Billy Gunn there, even though he's an employee of AEW. The badass Billy Gunn. And he's going to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. They'll, listen, they'll, not, invite him. they'll not invite him. They'll be like, unfortunately, Billy Gunn could not be here tonight <laughs> to accept, accept his tonight. award. No, um, yeah, it's no, it's it's nice. I say, I just, I always think back to that um, when Triple H was against having China in the Hall of Fame, and I'm like, why though, mate? Like, why? Why is it? See that the number bad? of rapists and murderers you've got in the exactly. Hall of Fame already. Exactly. And he on, he was on Stone Cold's podcast, where he was like, mm. um, I don't, uh, I don't want my kids uh, googling uh, China. And I'm like, any mate, anybody's gonna Google anybody nowadays. Like, you can find out what you want. If they Google a certain thing about you, Triple H, you're gonna find that fucking Katie Vick like, thing you did with her. Like, what are you on about? You were shagging. You, you were shagging fu- a necro- You fucked her. You're an actual. Necro- like, you're an actual necrophiliac, mate. Like, own your fucking shit. She only. Ma- she only made a bit of porn. Like, it's not that bad. X Pac made some porn, but nobody really cares about him doing it, do they? Yeah, your best mates. Your best pal made it. Your best pal Roger China on film, and he's that sound. But as soon as you try and get her involved, it's like it's the worst thing that ever happened to a man. Oh, yeah, Sean, been, Sean Michaels had, uh, is going to be in the Hall of Fame twice now, and he's not. He's not exactly fucking. He's not God's great salt of the earth. earth. He's Listen. got. He's got a bit of a history. Yeah, but no, I'm happy to see her in it. I hope they like. I hope they give like her own dedicated like kind of little montage for her, and not just like the kind of whole thing as DX. I hope they like break it down. I think they'll the just have. Into a, I think they'll just have a. Uh, an amalgamated thing for it to be honest I yeah, hope not I saw, uh, she deserves like a, like a good 45 go, to a minute to is she oh it, that's yeah. nice I hope they give like a, at least like I hope like it's a video package and I think it, I hope it like breaks off and just shows a little bit of like just a bit of China on her own yeah because she deserves mm. it I feel really bad for she, 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 she was literally China. like a, it's so bad that it's like such a huge part of a few years too late yeah. She was the most famous famous member of DX. Like she was more famous than Triple H and Shawn Michaels. It's just got her in that she like was. she had to kill her before they was. could induct her into it. Like it doesn't seem very fair that they had to wait for her to die. I feel like they do that a lot, don't they? Like they seem to wait until people kill her and then they're like, right, now we'll induct that person. Yeah. So that gets a bigger rub that they're like now that they're dead. It's like they're just like posthumously inducting them. Like, why not Cause just... it's all it's all PR, isn't it? Though it so it's PR, all like yeah. they just it. they basically just get a bunch of people who they can trust to carry a little ring around and then go yeah, to these true. meetings as Hall of Fame yeah. members. Yeah, and they don't want them doing like a Hulk Hogan or a the Ultimate Warrior or anything. That well, Ultimate Warrior kind of did it and then died. He was the perfect perfect catch. Um, yeah. But they, they don't the want conspiracy. them. They don't want them going off on some kind of like racist right wing rant or like fucking shooting up a zoo or something like that True. do you know what I mean so they think if they're dead well at least they can't at least wrong, we can... Can they? yeah exactly yeah. so it's, it just works their favour a little bit more doesn't it yeah I suppose so um, other backstage stuff as well they've re- they signed Abyss from TNA um, yeah so big lad, a big couple lad. of weeks ago Chris the Parks big dog. is his real name but big hoss not going to be an in-ring performer I'm not surprised he's about 85 40, 45 years that's near enough 85 not that old yeah. really there's yeah, probably people on did, the main roster older than that he did a lot of deathmatch stuff that day, I think, yeah and, like, he did but yeah. he started his role as a, a his producer knees are probably very bad this week as well so um, what's, he gonna, what he what's he going to do though well, was he, that, he wasn't that good of a wrestler let's be honest enough, but, you know, we're all right. not necessarily mean that he had um, he had quite a passion for the business. Yeah, a mate, a mate yeah. of mine. He did it. He did a show up in Carlisle a few years ago. A mate of mine met him, and um, he's saying he was just uh, just a really nice, down to earth guy. He talked a lot about his. Um, apparently, he was originally slated to face the Undertaker in one of the street matches at WrestleMania, but he bottled nice. it. Couldn't uh, do it. Yeah. Couldn't right. do it. Bottled it. Yeah, he said he just couldn't do it. So he um, hunkered down and re-signed with TNA. And um, yeah, apparent, apparently, he just just wasn't ready for the levels of fame and the, the travel and all that kind of stuff but Definitely. you know, always really loved the business I mean doing indie jobs in Carlisle you must have some dedication to the business <laughs> but um, but yeah no, I, I, I really hope you can get on with get on with them and maybe like shake it up a little bit I think they need yeah. more in-ring producers I know they've just, is Mark Henry a producer now or is he just the bodyguard yeah, or his, whatever the his enforcer his backstage enforcer yeah. is his role yeah I like a bit of that but um, Road, Road Dog seems to be doing alright and um, 
yeah. you know PSAs did it for the longest time I guess so. can we just also well, go Murdoch back was to never, like one of the strongest performers in ring he was alright but no. he wasn't like but then again a if it was Road Dog's decision to fucking make Asuka lose to whatever her name is all the Mandy night Rose, to Mandy yeah. Rose then yeah. he needs a, he needs a kick in the face because why, why take her off why let her beat the man at Rumble and then two weeks go by and you don't even know where she is if she's alive if she's yeah, fucking dead and then you bring her back on TV and Mandy Rose rolls her up for a three count yeah what's the point yeah what is why the point why do we bother why do we bother with it why do we watch it why do we get time of day <laughs> what's the point how can you she's one of the best that there is she literally beat the person that you want to main event mania and probably going to like raise a title at the end of the night is Becky yeah. Lynch she beat her clean and then you let her, you just you just take her off TV. You don't bring her back. And then when you do bring her back, Mandy Rose of all people. And again, I love Mandy Rose, but she's not good enough to beat Asuka. Why? Yeah, it's just lazy booking, isn't it? If that were you, Road Dog, saw that. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame. 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 Brilliant. We've also had this week. Ty Dillinger has publicly said he's uh, asked for his release. Good. Bye. Don't care about him. I, it never worked for him when he got called up. To it the didn't. Roster. They gave him like that nice little ten no. spot in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. That was nice and fun. Yeah, Two that's pretty good, mate. And then it's like, 10. yeah, right, that's done now. We don't need you anymore. Was, I really liked him down so, in NXT. He was I so really liked yeah, him. Yeah, he was good in NXT. So over in NXT. He was good in NXT. Was, I saw him live, I think, in NXT, and I was like, yeah, his works. He's really cool. I like this. And then it just, yeah, he called him up. And again, as is with the Rain roster, they had nothing for him to do because no. there's too many people there anyway. And yeah, you give him, you give him two rumbles, and then the third one, you're probably thinking. Ooh, that joke's really now. worn a bit old. I'd bring him out like nine or something like that. That would be, be my idea. That would be my workaround for it. But. It's the um, it's the same thing. It's the Bobby Roode effect, in it? It's like you've got all this charisma and you, you manage to make it work on the main roster. I mean, on the undercard NXT-wise. And then as soon as you get called up, everyone's got this like, ooh, ooh could he, could he, could he be the one, yeah. could he be the one. And then you end up, you end up like Tyler chances. Breeze just kind of jerking the curtain, jobbing out in that, in that gold dust position until you... So you're in your fifties. I mean, the guy's what thirty eight now, thirty nine. Yeah. So he's like, he's he's not exactly in the prime of his career. But no. um, I, I don't know. I, I noticed Cody tweeted out saying that he was fearless, but I kind of think, well, you didn't you didn't leave a year ago no. when there wasn't really much out there like Cody now did. You're leaving now yeah, that yeah. AEW's exactly. cropping up, and I feel a bit like, are you going to be a bit like that Aaron Rex guy that everyone was really high on, and then go to? AEW in the indies and just kind of continue to do a similar thing as to what you're doing and not really change your game or are you going to go and have these you know extra extra excellent five star matches in, in Japan and AEW I yeah. mean you, you, time can only tell for him but to me yeah. it's like it's not a bad wrestler is he, it's just is he that good you've well, still got to grab the ring you've still got to grab yeah, a brass course, ring yeah, no matter where you're at so. yeah. he tweeted um, a couple of weeks ago in fact it's before the AEW announcement he tweeted just the date of when the announcement is basically yeah. changed his Twitter handle back to his original name. I think wouldn't surprise me if he's like mates with Cody though, and Cody were like, oh, well, they both thing. trained together in yeah. Ohio Valley Wrestling. They trained together there, so I think Cody does hold him in high regard. And he's he's good. He's a good talent. He's just been wasted. I think I think the that thing yeah, gimmick of, um, the of worry being is, the perfect ten can only last so long. Yeah, the worry is for me is like, and again, I love this AEW. It's ne- never going to be a bad thing in any way, shape, or form. The one thing that worries me is it's going to give a lot of like an undercard guys the confidence to quit and then not be able to find work anywhere because they're not that good. Yeah, that's what I worry about. They could think there's something mm. out there. I'm, yeah, like this, this is it. This is booming now. This is the time yeah, for me to go. Yeah. And then they quit and ring Cody up, and Cody's like, "Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll get back to you, mate. I'll let you know." Well, don't call us. We'll ring you, and then just ne- just be sat at home doing nothing, yeah. like working. I like, think Cody, forty people in. House. I think Cody will probably give him a shot, but like, like, it's one of those things. You rock up and you're still wearing your generic gear and you're still doing your generic move set that like you did in WWE. You're not going to win any prizes, nah, yeah, to be honest. Sure. The the only way a mid card from WWE can really make a, a statement is by going out there and doing some mad PCO type shit where you're just throwing yeah, yourself on your crazy fl- like flat blacks off the top rope and like yeah. all sorts of crazy shit. But I don't see them doing it because they want that security and they want that paycheck. But mm. if you're gonna make waves, you've got to you've got to throw yourself in there a little bit, I suppose. Yeah, true. Hopefully, it does well. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I'm yeah, sure he'll find, he I'm sure he'll find he, a spot somewhere he'll go on find some card. Somewhere, yeah, he'll find something, and he'll do pretty well. Um, but it's been a bit of a, a bit of a oh, busy week. Lots lots of things happening. Been a big week, hasn't it? Been man? a big week. Um, <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at the Lights Pods. You can find us on Instagram at Staring at the Lights. Um, RGM dot Press that we occasionally write things for as well. Um, 
we'll see that we need to do a bit more we for, but we're just we're absolutely we useless. Uh, we're flat just out, aren't we? Lazy. Also, if you are listening and you're new, uh, please like leave us a like, drop us a comment. Like it, it really helps out more than you would know. Yeah. Um, we it's also upload to YouTube as well. Review. Oh yeah, mate, if you think we're shit, give us a one. Like, I don't mind. It's all feedback. Yeah, if you don't think we're very good, that's fine. Just let, let us know. know. But any, 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 us, anything's yeah. great. Uh, but yeah, we also How upload to YouTube as well. can we get better if we don't know? Exactly, mate. Exactly. Love it. Love it.